Welcome, everybody. Thank you for joining us. For those of you who don't know as well, we're a leading professional services consultancy with multiple service lines across two divisions. The first division being insolvency and advisory, which includes corporate and personal insolvency, corporate finance and financial advisory. And that represents about 70% of our business. The other 30% is the second division of property and asset services, which includes valuations, transactional services, and property consultancy planning and management. Our business model is to be in the heart of the local community, so we have a comprehensive network of offices around the country with 720 staff and partners. Our senior staff are qualified as either licensed insolvency practitioners, accountants, chartered surveyors, or lawyers. And we have seen a cumulative average growth rate in adjusted EPS of 16% over the last five years. A strong first half performance, giving confidence in the full year, and that's despite the challenges of lockdown and a disrupted insolvency market. The strong financial performance you'll have seen in the uh, announcement this morning includes a 25% increase in adjusted pre-tax profit, and all areas of the group perform well. First time contribution from prior acquisitions, organic growth across both divisions, and good recovery from lockdown from the impacted property service lines which bounced back in Q2. The 11% increase in interim dividend builds on increases over the last three years, and we've maintained a strong financial position with net cash at the period end. We expect full year results at least in line with consensus. I'll now pass you over to Nick Taylor for the financial review. Thank you, Rick. Looking at the financial highlights for the six-month period, uh, very pleased to report a solid sequential performance in which we have maintained the uplift in profitability that we reported in the second half of last year, which you can see from the table at the top half of the slide. Looking at highlights compared to the comparative period to October 2019, we're reporting a revenue increase of 11% in the period. Operating profits are up with an improvement in margins to 14.6% from 13.2% last year. And that margin enhancement has come from profit growth and margin enhancement within business recovery. Adjusted pre-tax profits are up by 25% to 5 million from 4 million last year. And we anticipate our tax rate for the full year will be broadly in line with where we were last year at 21%. And that gives growth in EPS of 19% for the six months. And that EPS calculation reflects the increased share count from the placing we completed last year. As Rick said, we're proposing to increase the interim dividend by 11% to a penny. And we're in a strong financial position with net cash at the period end of 0.7 million, having started the six month period with net debt of 2.8 million. On the next two slides, we'll look at performance by operating segments, starting with business recovery and financial advisory, where we've reported revenue growth of 13%, or 3.1 million in the six months. From acquisitions, 2.1 million of revenue, and that's principally the first time contribution from the acquisitions we completed during the year last year. And we've also seen a solid organic performance which has mitigated weakness in the wider insolvency market, which has generated about a million pound of revenue growth in the period. The increase in costs is principally as a result of costs from the acquisitions. And we've got a 35% growth in operating profit with an improvement in margins on the comparator. And you can see we've maintained the margins on a sequential basis from the level we reached in the prior year. Our order book of committed insolvency revenue is up. It's reached 20.9 million from 19 million at the start of the year, which is very pleasing in what's been a very difficult market over the course of the last six months. And that excludes income from contingent cases. And the advisory team have made a good start to the financial year. Our corporate finance revenue is broadly in line with the comparative period. 
turning to property advisory and transactional services. We're reporting revenue growth of 6%. That's acquired growth of 10% or about 1.1 million, which is the first time contribution from the business sales agency we acquired last year. And we've got an organic reduction of about 4% on the comparative period. That's the net impact of the COVID lockdown of 1.2 million, which has been partially mitigated by organic growth elsewhere in the division of 0.7. And Rick will talk a little bit about the organic growth that we've delivered within property on a later slide. Again, the cost increase, as in business recovery, is largely from acquired businesses. And as a result of the disruption from COVID and lockdown in our first quarter, we're reporting an operating profit reduction of 24%, but we're still generating solid margins in the division in spite of the significant disruption that we've experienced this year. Just looking at the profit impact that COVID has had on the division in the six month period. It's taken profits down by about 1.1 million. That's from the revenue reduction of 1.2 million I noted above. And that's comparing to where we would expect the results to be in a normal operating environment. That's principally made up of two factors, reduced activity levels, taking profits down by about one and a half million. And that's been offset by some income that was deferred from the prior year of 0.4 million. So I'm pleased to report we've seen a very good recovery in activity levels over the course of the second quarter and we're in a much better position as we start our second half. We have maintained our strong financial position. We started the year with net debt of 2.8 million, free cash flow of 6 million up from 3.1 million last year. Before working capital that's an inflow of 4.1, the increase largely as a result of the profits uplift. And we've benefited from 1.9 million of working capital inflow. That's deferred VAT payments of 2.7 million, offset by net working capital absorption of 0.8, which would expect to reverse over the course of the second half. We've invested 1.4 million in acquisitions. 1.1 were deferred payments from prior year deals. The dividend was 1.1, giving closing net cash at the end of October of 0.7. We've got significant headroom in our bank facilities. Uh, they're made up of a 25 million revolving credit facility and a further 5 million acquisition line. And those facilities are in place until August 2023. And turning to the outlook for the full year, we expect our full year results will be at least in line with the current market consensus, which would represent the third year growth of profits and earnings per share. The short-term government support measures are continuing to subdue the level of insolvencies. We anticipate that as that support is removed, we will see distress increase within the corporate community and we'd expect that to lead to increased insolvencies over time. Within recovery and advisory, we are well positioned in spite of that market weakness. Our order book is up and we expect there will be increased market activity levels once those support measures are removed. Within property advisory and transactional services, we've seen a good recovery in activity following the uncertainties and challenges of the spring lockdown. And our next update will be a Q3 trading update in March next year. I'll now hand back to Rick. Thank you, Nick. A little bit of background on the insolvency market, where this year we've seen a reversal of the, the trend of increasing insolvencies, which we've seen over the last two years from something of a of a long-term low. That trend increased up until lockdown, so January and February saw increased activity and then as a result of the significant government support measures for corporates, obviously the furlough scheme, um, the soft loans, legislation changes which will come on to to protect struggling companies, that's all had an impact. Added lack of creditor pressure, HMRC, banks, landlords, trade creditors, um, all were affected to some degree for various reasons, either that's voluntary holding off policy in terms of government and HMRC, or lack of opportunity. And uh, by that, I mean with trade creditors particularly and uh, landlords, there's a big backlog in the courts due to lockdown, winding up petitions are down 80% as a result of that uh, backlog. Reduction in national appointments for the period, uh, for the six months to the 30th of September, we saw a reduction from last year of 7,305 down to 5,119, so significant 
reduction in corporate appointments. Those temporary legislation changes affected the rights of landlords to distrain on leases for non-payment of rent, affected the ability of uh, businesses to petition for winding up in respect of COVID-related debts, a suspension of wrongful trading provisions so directors could take on more liabilities for the companies, even if it was quite reasonable to assume those liabilities would never be repaid, and the new moratorium procedures that were put in place were relaxed to allow easier entry into those processes for businesses which had a prior insolvency or were subject to winding up petitions. All these various uh, temporary legislation changes have been extended, and some of them into March and April of next year. So it's likely we'll see those uh, changes having some impact on the number of appointments at the beginning of next year. But we also think the potential catalyst for growth during the course of next year, probably by the end of March, is the end of these government support measures. Credit pressures increasing as they have, that build up over the period and unrestrained because courts will be able to make winding up petitions and judgments. There's a significant increase in corporate debt and indeed there will be additional working capital funding pressures as businesses try to ramp business back up to normal levels. So all in all, we expect to see a busier insolvency market in, in 2021 than the stranger circumstances we've seen over the course of this year. Business recovery and financial advisory for us, I'm pleased to say a strong organic performance in this challenging insolvency market. The total value of new appointments in the period was maintained due to our increase in market share and an increase in the average size of cases, which mitigated that weak market and we saw the benefit of organic growth and recent acquisitions. Plus we saw more in restructuring and investigation work, so that's work which is not a formal appointment, but is dealing with businesses in distress. Our ongoing recruitment of senior fee earners is now making a positive contribution. So that's where we're recruiting people from our competitors principally, who are in a senior position, and have a reputation and uh, have a following in the marketplace. So they are work winners. They come and join us. When they join us day one, um, they have no work because their workload is left with their previous employer. So it takes time to build up to that normal level of work, which um, gives the sort of level of contribution that we'd expect. And that's a two or three year process. But we're starting to see that coming through positively now. And that um, recruitment process is ongoing. So we intend to, to make more senior recruits over the course of the next 12 months. In addition, we acquired a case portfolio and recruited five fee earners from Grant Thornton in May of this year. And we saw first uh, time contributions from our prior year acquisition of the insolvency practice in London, ALJ, which obviously is now Beckley's trainer. And that's uh, three million plus turnover business and is growing. And also Regeneratus, which is a restructuring and turnaround boutique in Exeter. And that's been very successful since it's joined us, not only in generating work for its own activities, but also additional referrals into the insolvency team. And our order book has increased, providing good revenue visibility for the second half of this year and beyond. We also have an acquisition pipeline to increase expertise and market share. And generally over the period, we have seen formal insolvencies. Our focus is SMEs, of course. We've seen insolvencies of more than 500 in the period. But some interesting cases have been there in the mix. For example, Wigan Athletic, uh, which is ongoing. We do hope to sell that in the very near future. On the restructuring side, which has been an interesting area for us, uh, Brasserie Blanc was a big restructuring case where we restructured 30 million of debt. For international travelers, you may recognize number one airport lounges. That was another sizable CVA for us and we did a debt refinance for the zigzag fashion chain. We've also seen quite a significant increase in the number of litigation and fraud investigation cases. As uh, the economist JK Galbraith said, the bezel gets noticed when times are hard, and we're certainly seeing that now. Um, some significant cases where fraud clearly has gone on, and we've been brought in to try and establish to what extent there is missing cash and how we can then try and locate that. Moving on to property services, a good recovery from lockdown. That was a bounce back from the Q1 impact. On the property valuation side, instruction levels recovered from some 30% of normal levels in Q1 
to 85% in Q2, which we're delighted with. Good levels of commercial property agency transactions and instructions. There is actually a very strong demand for property at the moment. So uh, selling properties is not a problem. Getting hold of them to sell is a bit more of a problem. The property auction business remained online in the period rather than physically in the room, which is the norm. The reduction to 40% of normal levels we saw at the start of lockdown, which is very much in line with the market, has now morphed into something like an 80% level of pre-lockdown properties being offered for auction, with a good number of those sold at auction. And we believe moving forward, we are likely to see a mix of the traditional physical in-the-room auctions and the online auctions we think will stay as part of the process. We saw a solid performance from business sales agency acquired in October 19. That's our Ernest Wilson estate agents for small businesses effectively. Its income was in line with pre-acquisition levels and the disruption we saw from lockdown at the start of Q1 has been fully recovered in Q2. Development areas in property. For our building consultancy division, we've seen significant increases in the school property funding for clients. We've managed projects for them totaling 28 million in the period, which is some 50% increase in the prior year. And the projected fees from that will be a little over 2 million as opposed to 1 million in the prior period. We've seen increase in realizations for machinery and business assets disposal. That's both for insolvency and the work we do direct with corporate clients. The robust performance has enabled selective recruitment of senior fee earners to benefit future periods in all of our service lines. And we have selective acquisition opportunities to expand service lines and geography. Moving on to the summary, a strong financial performance in the period. We expect full year results at least in line with current market consensus. We expect significant increases in insolvency levels next year. We have a strong financial position to invest in continued development and enhancement of the group with both organic and acquisition growth opportunities. And we have confidence in outlook for current and future years, building on the last five year track record of growth. To summarize, we're very pleased with our results. We're confident about the rest of the year and we expect an increase in demand for our services across the board for next year and beyond. So we, we feel like we're in a very strong place.